special event alert. I hope you brought the donuts, Juan, because you were late for changeover. That was a good one. Your weekly space news and variety show. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and I'm joined by Mr. History, Eric Perrot. Hey, the gang is all back tonight. Our man in the closet, Jake Wall. Cheers from the closet. <laughs> and our little mule is back, Juanito Lopez. With all the donuts you guys want, so you just let me know and I'll be late every day. Well, it wouldn't be donuts. It would probably be uh, one of the little cinnamon sticks that you guys got uh, down there in Mexico. Churros. Churros, yeah. <laughs> We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all guardians and to our earthbound brothers as well. So take your seats, get informed, and have a laugh as we present Late for Changeover. Woo. You know, I never got the donuts thing. To be honest with you. You know, so I learned about that before I joined the, the military. My supervisor was a retired senior. And I remember the first time I was late, I called. It's like, hey, Chuck, I'm going to be late. He's like, stop by for some donuts. I was like, huh? Yeah. So I did. And then he explained it to me as, uh, it's, if I wouldn't even call. They just picked up the donuts. My excuse was already there. I was like, hey, I was thinking about the shop. So I stopped by for some donuts and make sure that I hooked everybody up. <laughs> Did you have that, Eric? If you were late, you had to go stop and buy donuts or something oh, yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's so counterintuitive because you're trying to, like, fuck, I'm, I'm almost there. And I'm like, get donuts. Might as well get donuts. Five minutes or a half hour. Doesn't matter. It feels like an apology. Kind of, yeah. Remember that Hertz Donuts over here on Hess, Marty? The Hertz Donuts? Uh, oh, sweet. Oh, well, I've seen it. Yeah, I haven't been over there, though. Man, I took my grandkids there the other weekend, and they had... A key lime donut about that big, <sighs> and it was full and man, <laughs> about a twelve hundred calorie donut. What is that? Uh, what is that crazy donut place that's like downtown, like Cosm- Cosmic Donuts or something like oh. that, or whatever it is? But it's just like let's put as much crap wow. as we can on well, every donut. I know I the donuts that they have like Lucky Charms on them. They have- yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's 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 almost like when uh, Taco Bell comes out with something. It's like, ah, oh, the stoners were busy last night. They came up with a new food, and it is like the same with the donuts. They're like, oh, let's try Lucky Charms. Look at that one. All right. My grandson got a Snicker donut with Snicker oh, barb on the top. Really? Yeah. Dude, those donuts, those Hertz donuts are so sweet. Oh, Even yeah. like a standard yeah. Blaze. Oh, yeah. My, oh my. It's God. like a solid bowl of sugar. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I remember watching or reading uh, like the most calorie drink or something like that, and I think it was like Baskin Robbins, and it was one of their coffees or something like that because they had so much stuff in it, mm. and it was like eleven hundred calories or something. I was like, Jesus oh. Christ, man! Did you, <laughs> did you guys see the uh, McDonald's? The guy that did the yep. McDonald's uh, Super Size Me passed away. Oh, that guy who did the uh, documentary? He, he, yeah. He used to do another 30-day challenge and actually, because after a while he was doing 30-day challenges for everything. Yeah. This was a 30-day for the McDonald's and he passed away. Oh, yeah, no, but he was he kept doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, well, yeah, you find something that works and I guess he's just going to keep Ooh. running into the ground, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Right? Had to see him pass away, though. Well, uh, this Saturday, uh, Jake and I went out to Silver... Silver Creek Shooting Club uh, for uh, a clay shooting event to sponsor Freedom Hunters and a group called the Houndsmen. Now, Eric and Juan were supposed to come, uh, but they were both uh, unavailable. So, uh, and it wasn't, uh, it, it, and it was a good event. It was fun. Uh, Ken uh, Ramos from U.S. Army WTF Moments was there. So we shot with him and talked about podcasting and and talked about politics and talked about a whole bunch of other stuff and uh, had bouts of, Jesus, Jake, you can't miss, to, Jesus, Jake, are you opening your eyes? 
we did. We went back and forth like every round. I was like, holy shit, you are on. And then it was like, man, you just yeah. you really fell off the board. So I was um, written hours from the hip. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Uh, a good event though it was uh, we've done in the past when it was just freedom hunters and Benelli wasn't out there with their shotguns at every station so that was kind of disappointing but uh, I thought it would you tell me if I'm wrong Jake but I thought it was a little less uh, military vet this year and more like the hunters this year yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what it felt like um, that's not my dog so um get them out. the uh so we were gonna i i was planning on i didn't know how this was gonna work i was gonna do try to do some interviews and stuff but it kind of moved kind of fast you know it, we didn't really have a, a lot of chance to talk to vets and, and sit down with them for five ten minutes so um but uh we did get uh a little bit of video here let me take this uh it's the Ramos. Yeah, Ken Ramos. Ice as it, he goes by. It yeah, really it was fun. Time. So here's just it was just a little video from us. Uh whoa shit. Sorry about that. We got Freedom Hunters back there. We got Mountain. That's a good club. Hey, good too. Saturday morning to you. This is a late for changeover. Oh. We have I didn't friend Ice from I didn't realize how sensitive that mic was. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Uh, U.S. Army WTF moments, or is it Army WTF moments? Or is it WTF Army it's moments? U.S. Army WTF moments. People like to say what the fuck, but don't say what the fuck. You can just say WTF moments. <laughs> oh, awesome. on, Jake. We're at the uh, Silver Creek Shooting Club for coffee. Freedom Hunters and for the Houndsmen doing a skeet shoot fundraiser. And uh, hopefully we can get some more interviews out here. We did. Uh, I had to stand that far wall. back and, so they didn't look that short. And me. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> you made us look even shorter. You look like a giant. Like you're the size of the banners back there. It's crazy. Well, I didn't um, realize. <laughs> well, I know I know what your height was, Marty, but I didn't realize. Yeah, he's the same. Like, Command Sergeant Major Rummel right, was the I same. Walk yeah. up on him, I was like, what's going <laughs> on? Man? So that was Station Two. That was uh, that was fun though. I mean, they they had some. Uh, when you when you see all the guys with their vests walking yeah. around, it's like, oh, these guys—they're the ringers. Right? You know, it's like when you play a golf scramble, right? And you go, oh, you have a whole lot of towels on your bag. You must yeah, really man. be good. <laughs> or cornhole with... your own bags. Cornhole. Yeah. <laughs> they had yeah, the designated. That's a good vest. one. Yeah. They had the designated like. They had, they had golf carts. Actually, yeah, they yeah, they that was that was annoying. I mean, yeah. I because we wish we had one. So <laughs> we're over uh, here pulling Marty's collapsible car. <laughs> that little wagon. That's all we got. <laughs> Eating beef jerky and pulling that wagon all day. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but here's our closeout. Uh, so we got a little message for you guys. So uh oh. Like he's playing absolutely everything we did too. This is it. Yeah, this was it. I know we didn't do a lot. There was so. nothing else. Okay, we just got done with the shoot. Hey, Marty. We hit everything we. <laughs> no. Every clay we shot at got broken. By the ground, mostly. Mostly by the ground. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know we're gonna watch this video and we're gonna like who's that guy sitting right between us in the uh, back? Of the guy. Guy. <laughs> Houndsman guy represented. Houndsman. Uh, so I think most of it was about, I can't even remember, they should have said the name of the proposition that they're trying to defeat they don't in know Colorado sure. about the mountain lion ban. So uh, a lot of the fundraiser was here for that purpose. Oh, cool. We're waiting for the auction to see if we can win the pistol. <laughs> really holding out for the <laughs> autographed NBA basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, looks like I got a weightlifting bikini up there. So, Eric, you're going to Hey! <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. And for one, we had uh, Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> just want to include you, too. Yeah. There's no oh, yeah, stereotyping yeah, going on there. probably excited about the basketball. Yeah. He's a basket. He's a baller from way back. Yeah, that's right. But but honestly, it was a, it was a really good time. I had a fun time. Yeah, it was fun. Shooting good weather. in a can from uh, WTF Army. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, 
So hopefully we can do this again. Yeah, smooth that shout out was. So. Yeah, that was good. Back to you guys in the studio. Oh, <laughs> all right, you like that, huh? Very good. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's the first time. It, it's kind of the first time I ever used those things, and, and, and I guess it worked all right. So I it's mean, it would be it would be cool if uh, there are other events that we could kind of remote out to, and and Ken was talking about trying to get a bunch of podcasters together to do to sponsor something like that. So I thought that would be fun. But to do it justice, um, this is what the Houndsmen, Houndsmen of Colorado. So it's a national group, but they have a Houndsmen of Colorado. So this is the ballot initiative that they're trying to defeat. So ballot initiative num number 91, prohibit trophy hunting. So the ballot initiative talks about um, not doing not hunting mountain lions because they're just trophies right but it, but it didn't i haven't read the specific thing but or the parts that i've read it didn't break down specifically mountain lion lynx and all that it defined trophy hunting as specifically targeting right. one species or sex yeah but that's that's every hunt you go on yeah correct Literally, right. you get a tag for a male deer you're like, okay, you. Have, so you're. That's all you can shoot, or you get fined. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in the verbiage, it was so vague in, in this ballot measure. Um, yeah, they mentioned mountain lions, bobcats, and lynx. So, the conservative people are just trying to say, "Hey, stop shooting anything, really, right?" And Houndsman comes out and says, uh, "We as Houndsman know this statement is false and fear mongering at its core. We understand that ethical management of these species is crucial." to our undulate populations. Uh, yeah, I know I had to look that up and I think it means native deer, or something like that. Deer, antelope. Right. We also, we also understand that management of mountain lions and bobcats is widely beneficial to reducing the effects of human and wildlife conflicts, whether it be for livestock's sake or direct threat from these animals. Please, moving forward, know and understand your interactions online and with the folks you talk to. We are stewards of conservation and should do our absolute best to be respectful and conscious of what we say and how we say it. And there's there's more to it on their website, Houndsmen of Colorado. Uh, but that's the ballot initiative. Uh, and so you're they're trying to stop you killing these predators. But these but their their point is these predators are vital to controlling the herds and controlling the ecosystem uh, in Colorado. The so they have in California now, like they get mountain lion attacks all the time because. They stop a lot of the honey because they ban them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and a, realistically, uh, the only <clears throat> consistently like reliable, not even successful, but reliable way to do this hunt mountain lions is to do it with hounds. Um, that right. is going right. to try and track down something that'll climb ten feet in thirty seconds. Or two seconds, you know. By yourself? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, by <laughs> yourself. And they cover so much ground and they hide so well that it, it, it's ridiculous. So we yeah. talked with the point of contact out there for the houndsman. His name is Chris. Uh, I hope he comes. I gave him a card. I hope he he, uh, he calls me back. And I told him we'd love to have you on the show, you know, and present your, present your case and what you guys do and let people hear about it. So. Wow, that'd be well, cool. Yeah. The ballot initiative also labeled or specifically mentioned using dogs with tracking collars. And a lot of the duck hunters use specific collars on their dogs just to retrieve and come back or if the dog goes too far. Oh, that part. I didn't know they yeah. did that. So yeah, for that ducks. would also start targeting. They would use that same verbiage sure. uh, to target duck hunting because that's targeting a specific species. That's using right. dogs with tracking collars. That's yeah. well, and if they get if they get traction on this initiative, then they can use this initiative to go everywhere else they want to go. And that, and that was the concern. So, yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's a good cause. Uh, hopefully, Colorado defeats it. But you know, it's, it's a tough call. Colorado. I mean, Cal California didn't, like you said, one. You know, they they've done it already, and now they got all these problems. So New Jersey banned the um, hunting black bear. And now they have more black bear per capita than any other state. Oh, shit. They have black bears just starting brawls downtown, these small towns. Like, And, and that's what uh, that's what they're 
their position was is like let us take these predators out so the yeah. herds don't start like hey well let's go into the trash you know we got no food anywhere else let's go and that's, so, what, and that's what new jersey's running into wow yes remember when colorado reinserted wolves, wolves. And yeah, they're they're yes they made a huge thing of that right and they're and they're finding wolves in states that have not reinserted them. Yep. They're yeah, because they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're bringing them running. So much per- yeah, exactly. And so, they have so much territory. Right. It's ridiculous. Uh, in packs, not solo animals either. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, again, uh, more unintended consequences. So, Absolutely. it just, I mean, we don't know. You know, we pretend like we know all this stuff, but. In reality, we don't know exactly how to manage all this this wildlife. And, you know. uh, right, right. I mean, uh, you take the big thing from the past. It's like, hey, we hunted buffalo in the extinction. Okay, that's not grounds to go after everything else well, from here on out, right? Also, though, we hunted buffalo in the extinction, or they hunted buffalo in the extinction, to remove the, rel- the prevalent food source of the Comanches in the in the northern Texas, Oklahoma area. Yeah. It so was they a, did it on purpose. It's a military thing, yeah. To kind of try to tamp down the, the enemy at that time. Yeah, that's true. But they went, clearly they went too far. Well, that's, not, that's not what the Revenant told me. Yeah. Uh, the Revenant told me. For, for the, the railroad uh, purposes too, right? Yep. Yeah, to get the herds out of there, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Plus you, plus you had just wild guys back there. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, go, go shoot 30 of them and <laughs> get out of my face, would you please? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, oh, and the auction. Man, the crowd we were there was just dropping bills on these auction items, man. It was crazy. I mean, for, for being on folding chairs in a hangar and <laughs> yeah. not having an actual auctioneer, they, they literally took a volunteer and he... <laughs> I've never seen it where they start. At I never saw that either. Go down and then they start going back up. Well, they it would be like five hundred, right? Yeah, you're five hundred, five hundred. No, four hundred, four hundred, four, three hundred. And he would go down till somebody raised their hand. Two fifty, two twenty five. I was like, that was a pretty clever tactic, actually. You know, but, I've seen that done. No, uh, because it kind of you kind of guilt. It, it, there's a guilt that comes in. It's like, well, I'm not five, five, four, four hundred. What? <laughs> Jeez, we should really help them out. But he was he, the the first thing they auctioned off these six bottles of whiskey, and then you got a uh, a raffle of under the there was a ticket under each bottle of whiskey to win this big like keg uh, kind of bar uh, dispenser yeah. or something, right? Cool. So um, and and these whiskeys weren't. You know, they, they look like anything you could see in the liquor store. But the one guy, I, I think he bid four fifty, five hundred dollars on one bottle of whiskey, and they're like sold. And he's like, "Put it back in, right? Sell so again, right now." And they did that with about three bottles. I think they resold them. One they resold like three times. Yep. And we're looking around, and and Jake made this comment. Um, and we were like Caddy Day and Caddy Shack out there with some of these shooters. They're like, who invited oh. these sons of bitches, right? These, these shooters, like, if they didn't have vests, they had the button up. They had the they, button up right. Right with the freaking shoulder pads. And oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the trap and skeet equipment, right? And the <laughs> outfit to go. And we're sitting there. Just- we're pulling a wagon. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So when we got in there, I mean, but these uh, these guys look like you know regular Elizabeth guys, you know, some uh, you know uh, on a farm or retired or something like that. But they're throwing thousand bucks, you know, they're throwing hundreds of dollars at this auction. I was like, good on them. Uh, I I keep going. I w- I wish I had managed my money. I could do that, but no, I'm uh, I just got a job. <laughs> so man, they, yeah, they're. But they they raised some money, which yeah. Was super cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And so you know, hopefully next year we can all do it. Yeah. for us, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounded like the cause was well worth it to those folks. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I you know I would have liked to see freedom hunters step up a little more because freedom hunters uh, they'll take disabled people and take them on hunts. So if you're in a wheelchair but you used to deer hunt, they'll be like. 
come on with us and they'll arrange it that they'll get you in a stand you know you can actually go shoot they put you in some child proof backpack on the biggest guy <laughs> no, that's <laughs> hey Eric <laughs> we got a legless son of a bitch over here. Put that they were doing back. like dog hunts and stuff in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they do. Like, they do a lot of stuff. It's really load cool. them in the back of the truck. Just shoot That's from cool. the truck, man. Well, I, I thought that was what they did for armadillos. Isn't that what yeah. they do for the armadillo hunts? They it's just oh, like a, you know a bear in one hand and you're written hour from the hip. It's right? <laughs> like ah, getting armadillos. Yeah, coyotes same way. All right, Juan is tired. Let's get let's get go with the news here, so he can go back to his nap. That nap hit him hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's no recovery from that. Man. We've all we've all done that. You wake up from a nap and you're like, what? Jess can't get back. Right, right, right. For high school. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this first story is from Stripes.com. All right. And we have a couple guys here that I want to get a, an opinion on. So this is from the Orlando Sentinel. The Space Force Training Headquarters, Starcom, gets official approval to come to the Space Coast. The decision has been a year in the making, but the Space Coast, I, it's funny, they keep calling it the Space Coast. Florida, right? They keep calling it the Space Coast. Well, it's Cape Canaveral, Melbourne. And Patrick, right? Patrick, yeah. Uh, Space Coast will officially become the home of Starcom, the training headquarters for Space Force. Patrick Space Force Base and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, both former... How far apart are those two? They're pretty close, right? They're right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're on Melbourne. They're on the same coast. Uh, both former Air Force facilities were named in May 2023 the presumptive home for Starcom, which stands for Space Training and Readiness Command. It's one of three Space Force Field Command units similar to an Air Force Air Command. Senator Marco Rubio confirmed the decision was made final, posting congratulations on X. Great news for Florida. Patrick uh, Space Force Base has received final approval to become the permanent headquarters for Starcom, bolstering Florida's growing leadership in space, uh, Rubio posted last Tuesday. Starcom is responsible for the deliberate development, education, and training of space professionals in addition to the development of space warfighting doctrine tactics, techniques, and procedures, and the operational test and evaluation of Space Force systems. That sounds like it came right out of an OER, didn't it? Uh, Starcom, for now, is run out of Peterson Space Force Base in Colorado, while the Space Force's overall headquarters is based in Washington at the Pentagon, along with other uh, headquarters of the nation's armed forces. The Orlando Sentinel reached out to Starcom for details about the timeline and personnel plan for the headquarters move to Brevard County, but is yet to hear back. So they, they, they're like, hey, we're going to Patrick. When? Hey, we're going to Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, with the names, with all the acronyms, it sounds like they reached out to William Shatner and said, I know, I know. Tell us what we should call this new training command. That, that one that one is not so far fetched, right? As some of them. Because it's space training and uh requirements. What is it? Space training. Sounds it's not so bad. Space training and readiness. All right. I, I mean I'm telling you, everything came right out of freaking Star Trek, I'm telling you. So, but did you know that the Delta though, the Delta, the space delta is actually um was conceived from the military that was never a star trek and no like, star trek's off center right it's yeah. it's not a, no, uh, no, no. a lot of people who's like oh that delta they took it no no because it's they, uh they took skewed, it from the military right? and then they okay that's fair but, right. um, but the name uh, and the beam me up scotty <laughs> emblem that they wear <laughs> and come but, on but what's funny is that's just going to be the headquarters so. <laughs> Uh, Eric, don't be so salty. I got a couple security forces <laughs> stories for you later. All right. Okay. <laughs> but it's only going to be like so far from everybody I've spoken to, and even the the, uh, the SEL that got selected for for that. It just sounds like so far it's just going to be the headquarters guys. And this is training still going to be at Vandenberg. And then you're going to have well, officer, sure, but it, yeah, it's going to move, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Officer trainings. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but those Space Two Hundred, Space Three Hundred, all those advanced courses. They all got nixed, and now they're going to have back-to-back training at Peterson for the officers. There's going to be 12 classes every year, so it's going to be all the officer training. But now they're not going to be um, 
dedicated to one mission. They're going to be generalist. They're going to get trained for space, cyber, and intel now. So they're well, trained to be over a year. Well, Jake was mentioning that NSSI is gone, right? Yeah, it's no more, right? Uh, and so they're ro- they're folding all that curriculum into Starcom, Eric, into Starcom, right? Um, stop it, because we're going to make fun. Oh, no, we're not going to make fun. And we have no defense, so so stop beating us up, right? Would you? Um, now, Starcom is going to be Space Force's ATC equivalent, right? I mean, that's essentially what it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. So eventually they're going to go, Jake, you said they're going to do basic, but their event, the first would be their tech school, right? They're, so their tech school's got to be out there when they get spun up. I honestly don't know. Like there was rumors that they were going to move basic out there and to Patrick. Um, but I don't so know. I don't know. You talk, Vandenberg's not. You're talking about your first stage of your training for a space guy, right? Uh, the tech Force. school, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Space Force basic training mm-hmm. was supposed to rumored move to Patrick. But well, right now it's at Lacker. I right? I wonder how many. Uh, I don't. I wonder what Space Force's new recruit quota is, right? I mean, you're not you're not talking about the numbers of any other service, so it's going to be low numbers for every basic training class. Right? The Marines have two basic training bases. That's right. Yeah, and they that's don't right. Have a shit ton of numbers either. So it, it's got to. It, it would I would imagine it's got to follow in that same model. So you could move it out there. You know, I mean, uh, they're not running anymore. They're just. I mean, it's like, hey, run over there and get in line for your Apple Watch. Long walks <laughs> on the beach. Is- Sure. So, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but the only, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to get ahead in one of the topics that you're going to talk about. But besides the beer, the weight standards. When I go on base and I see these guys in uniform, the space force guys, I'm just like those buttons are screaming. They're like, it's, it's all heart rate, man. It has nothing to do with weight. It's all heart rate. I mean, that's a, they're like, hey, you look out of shape, and they're like, no, I'm not. Look at my watch. Look at my well, watch. Tracks, yeah. Yeah, it tracks how active you are throughout the day. And then if it says you're, you've are you been active. I, I still think that we should do that bit where Jake, the first sergeant, calls a guy in and is like, hey, you know, uh, you were really active at one in the morning last night. I was like, oh, yeah, my watch was going crazy. I was like, yeah, we, we see the results. <laughs> And also, your government charge card has a whole lot of OnlyFans charges on it at the same time. Uh, so, uh, it, I, I don't know how long this is going to take because that's a whole shitload of personnel they got to get out there, right? Yeah. Probably the infrastructure is probably the least of it, you know, because there's so much out of Patrick right now anyway. <laughs> what do you do with all the Vandenberg stuff? All the stuff it's that's just in there. That's it, true. There's simulators and stuff and and all that, but I, I think I think those have been de-emphasized over the last decade, where it's pushed down to the unit now more, uh, where you go and you get some basic train basic stuff, and then the unit will fill out your the rest of your training rather than trying to match a simulator for every system that they got out there. So I think they've been de-emphasizing that. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder I, how that's working out. I, don't know. I was always suspect yeah. about that. Yeah. Right. So, so I'll like, tell it, you. So I, I, I was like part of the. I was there when they were already talking about getting rid of all the simulators. I got to Buckley when they, all right, cool. It's only Space 100, OUSD, EUSD. They keep changing it all the time, right? Right. But uh, right. I would tell you that. Um, it brought a lot of bad habits to the instructors that were at the unit. Because at least when you go through the formality of AETC, <laughs> you learn how to teach, you learn not to speak in jargon. You you could, you know, you like, I remember getting, seeing new recruits when I was in the job when I got back. And the brand new instructors that never went through any formalities, they were just fire hosing these kids that never yeah. been, like, this is like their, their, first, their first duty station. And fire hosing and all these acronyms and stuff. And I had, I always had to pull people aside. It's like, hey, these are brand new people. They're talking to them in French. 
like you gotta get back to bases when you're doing this like yeah well and your your instructor student ratio is shit yeah right so i mean because you're, you're just i mean vandenberg's just like go to your unit and now you got 30 guys 20 whatever it is coming in all waiting for training and you got a handful of instructors and you're like god dang <laughs> they were always complaining about the recency of training right like yeah oh you're not as proficient or in theory because you're not 30 seconds off the ops floor you know but there's something to be said about being isolated and being strict with your curriculum and strict with your instructors and not having any actual ops floors or operational commanders or anything else going on other than training. Right, right, right. You know, and I and I knew that would get washed down or sure. washed out as soon as the local commanders started putting pressure on things. Well, yeah, I mean, when you're in Vandenberg, you're in a pristine environment. All you need to do is learn the system, learn right. your job. You go to the unit and do that same training, and they're like, hey, we got a mandatory formation. Oh, we're all off on Friday. Oh, uh, we got a four-day weekend. Uh, and all of a sudden, now your training is like, what the fuck? Oh, why, why am I at this uh, event? I'm supposed to be training. And they're like, oh, and Commander For you guys, me. you had MTLs that were taking care of these guys. That's a good point. Right? Yeah, that's MPLs true. The MPLs knew good point. that they had appointments. They knew that <clears throat> what was going on. They sure. would handle all the freaking extracurricular activities, like any freaking punishment like that. And and the students were isolated and still kind of... They were supposed to concentrate on training. Yeah. Right. And they're coming down off a of basic. You literally yeah. took yeah. somebody from basic... And did 100 and then just go to the freaking... Go to Denver. Well, then, right. Go to Denver. Yeah. Or it's go to Colfax. Fun. You know, you're like, holy shit. It's the foundation, so though. What I've always liked this. hey, welcome to your unit, whether it's the second Space Morning Squadron. But they went through service training. They already have a foundation of that weapon system. Mm -hmm. So at least I know when I start speaking in jargon or these acronyms, they know what I'm talking about. You don't have that number. Eric, there used to be when we were governed over the by the twenty first, um, and they would do inspections all the time. Uh, but they used to have a mirrored system to the op to the op actual ops floor at Buckley. They had that system out of Vandenberg. So if you did an update to the Buckley system, you had to do an update to the Vandenberg system. So in in order to when you were training. This is the most current thing that you're training on. And it was a simulator, not emulator. So you could connect live comms to it, and you could do operations. It was everything you could do at the unit. It was impressive. But it, it now, awesome. it took, uh, it, it was a labor to keep that thing updated, and it was expensive to keep that thing updated. Data in, data out. Uh, it was, but if you did an update over here, you had to budget in another 100000 to go update Vandenberg. You, you know, something you like that. for, you know? Right, right. Um, and as soon as they started relaxing that, um, I mean, GPS guys can tell you that. They've had an emulator forever. In fact, Kevin Reed talked about doing his GPS training where they would do a printout of a screenshot and go, your screen says this, and hand it to them. <laughs> it's like a piece of paper with a printout. It's like, oh, okay, I'm supposed to respond to this like it's coming up on my monitor. So, For, for anybody out there, any actual civilians that have made it 40 minutes now, um, <laughs> and they're like, we've got some of the best trained military in the world. Y yes. And well, that's true. We do. Yeah. But compared to <laughs> if you can imagine you going into your first job and saying, Hey, this is really like people will die if you don't do this. And then them sliding you a fucking printout. <laughs> Please react as if it's on the console. You're like what the fuck? Marty, you told us that about a couple of years when they didn't have enough rounds enough money yeah an artillery rounds we're artillery. pulling primers instead of shooting rounds yeah, so you're, yeah. you're yeah. shooting blanks while right. basically while every one other person one out of ten or one out of six is shooting an actual round right i'd like to imagine eric and they're like hey you come around the corner and you see this 
and they hold up a. <laughs> what do you do? It's a small wet, and it's holding a baby. Did you shoot her? <laughs> it's holding a baby. <laughs> Did you shoot or not shoot? Oh, okay. I mean, that's crazy. And uh, you know, so that's 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 a great point, Jake, to put it in perspective for other for other people. So yeah. uh, where you're. T- you know the the quality of your training, and and then if they're not good, then you're going to go into retraining, and you lose that person off the floor yeah. even more. So, I can't imagine like welding, <laughs> doing like that, or an electrician, <laughs> right. or like right. a medical team. Like, I, I, I understand discussing medical theory. Sure, no. I do models symptoms. What do you do? But, yeah, operations, exactly. game operations, maybe. I don't know. That's exactly. Oh it. yeah, That's very exactly good. It. That would That's be an, an emulator emulator. one. That would yeah. be an <laughs> emulator. Um, yeah, you're welding and you smell oh. <laughs> this. What do you do? Fire in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they're all excited about Starcom going up there, um, uh, and. God damn! Like like you guys said in the pre-show, that you know property prices are going to go. I mean, we were ta- what what base were we talking about where they were living in RVs because they didn't have enough housing. Oh, that was, and that now was you're going to influx. That was uh, Virginia. Yeah. yeah, and now you're going to influx Patrick with Starcom headquarters and then more students. And they were like, uh, you know, weather's great here. You could sleep on the beach if you wanted to. Take your tent. Here's <laughs> your tent. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a big tent. It's a four-man tent. So, you know, if you got a family. Well, you know, plenty of room. Plenty of room. At least you could go on the beach in Florida. You know, it's not like the, they got snowy plover problem snowy out there. Snowy plovers. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so... Good on them. Um, like a sand newt or something. That they- <laughs> they'll, they'll come up with something. Because there's more government there, they'll come up with something. A sand flea. Versus yeah, a exactly. <laughs> All right. I'm this- encouraging you to go out there. Like, <laughs> please, less articles of clothing. Feed the fleas, guys. Oh, my God. I, I, I could not imagine it's being stationed out there with all, with all the distractions that are going on. Mm. Uh, okay, this next story is proof that apparently the number one topic in, that is concerning the U.S. military today is beards. <laughs> My we God, we keep talking about beards. Problems. <laughs> so, Congress is now involved, right? Oh, God. From Stripes.com, military beards gain new momentum as House panel OKs an Air Force pilot program for beards, not a pilot beard. Right. It's a pilot program. Uh, lawmakers took steps this week toward making beards acceptable in the military with the House Armed Services Committee. This is the most important thing they got to do. That's what your tax dollars taken care of right there. Yeah. The House <laughs> Armed... <laughs> sheets from freaking Ukraine making money. Hey, 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 we got a much more pressing issue. We're talking beards here, okay? <laughs> Ukraine can sit. Yeah. The Gaza pier that's not working, that can let's sit. Be honest, though, hey? Let's be honest, if we were in right now, our last couple of years, and said, hey, y'all can wear beards, you're telling me you're not going to do it. Oh. oh, if they let me, yeah. But, yeah. but part of that is like, this is the number one request oh, in yeah, I see what you're quality saying. of life. I was like, I've never sat with a group of military guys like, yeah, this life wouldn't be so bad no. if I could grow my beard. Base housing. Yeah. Black mold beef, and right? freaking fuel in our water is bullshit. <laughs> I could deal with all that bad shit, but if I had a beard. You know, that's I mean. those, who cares about that? I step that shit like coke. Uh, we survive without a beard for the I, well the years of military service. With yeah, no beard? No. I, 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 I think, think I closet. think if they're worried, <laughs> say that again. I can stand to do the podcast in my closet yeah. you have a beard. because of my beard. That's a good point. <laughs> well I don't done. even have a full beard. I just, yeah. a bit but I've seen I you with a full beard, beard, and that that silver fox shit is that's good looking, man. That's fucking good looking. The House Armed Services Committee approved a proposal directing the Air Force to run a selective three-year pilot program that could lead to permanent approval. An amendment in the draft 2025 National Defense Authorization Act that was adopted unanimously 
by the committee Wednesday would require the Air Force to study the impact of allowing Air Force and Space Force members in certain units to grow beards. So most of the other forces despise the Space Force, a la oh. Eric. Right. Oh, yeah. Now watch them walking around with full beards, and you don't think they're going to hate them even more. Oh, <laughs> and, and most of the other branches are questionable on the freaking Air Force, even. Oh yeah. I, oh sure. Still, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Air, whole Chair Force mentality. Right. 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 With with between Army and Navy and Marines, they're like, oh, the Chair Force. Okay. You know, if there if there is one force that is glad the Space Force was created, it's the Air Force because they're like, whoo, that's a whole lot of pressure off us. <laughs> well, we got a, we got rid of a lot of nerds. <laughs> Second of all, look how dumb they are, guys. <laughs> We're a real branch now. They're what? fat and they're wearing beards. Look at them. Oh. Look at them. <laughs> But it's so funny they that count that this is doing PT. PT. <laughs> what were you saying, Juan? No, I'm saying Water it's funny that we're talking about now the House Committee approved this for your program, but they're already doing it. They don't even need this thing. They already have beers. You go on base. Well, yes, but this is now. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. This is all this study here, and I'll explain it. So, um, so uh, they adopted unanimously by the committee Wednesday will require the Air Force to study the impact of allowing Air Force and Space Force members in certain units to grow beards. Selection of the units for the pilot program will be up to the Air Force Secretary, who is directed in the legislation to ensure that the units picked are, quote, located in geographically diverse areas and perform various missions. The service would be required to submit an initial report to Congress within a year of the start of the program followed by a final report at the end of the Air Force Secretary or at, final report at the end of the three years with the Air Force Secretary's recommendation on whether to make the program permanent. Now, I will take odds on whether that Air Force Secretary goes, you know, this didn't work out, no beards. Oh, can you imagine oh. that? Bullshit, he'll never say that, right? The door's already open, right? Yeah, one, one is 100% because... You go through any checkpoint on base, guaranteed one yeah. out of three yeah. of those guys is going to have some sort of... Just like that picture I showed you, the guy checking IDs. I was like, yeah. what? what is yeah. that? He's not... He doesn't. His face doesn't look irritated. He's a white yeah. guy. You know, he's, he's fine. Um, you know, the food service guys going. wearing hair nets on their chin now? <laughs> those are probably the only clean-shaven guys. I'm going, yeah, to, right. I'm going to my You government. can't do that, can you? I'm going to Montgomery on the 21st to do a first salute for one of the guys I supervise. He actually called oh, me. Oh, nice. Up. Nice. And I was like, cool, um, let me get my uniform together. He's like, you know I'm shaving my beard for this, right? He's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Everybody has a beard. It's like, dude, I'm not going to be that close. <laughs> I'll shave. Like, it's actually, I, I think it's an honor that you asked me to do it. You know, yeah, right. That right. boy, Juan. But and now you, you are old school, Juan. That's yeah, right. And he only retired a couple of years ago. You're yeah, old it, school. Willie got back in his uniform and he shaved. Yeah. Full shave. I was like, Willie, I'm and, sorry. And you, you know, there, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you though. That, you know how you get the little angel and the devil. You know, the little devil's like, hey, dude, just don't worry about it. Don't shave. Nobody's gonna ask you anything. I will. That's true. But, uh, Put your retiree pin on. I will. By God. No, but but. Well, like, did you I, shave for that thing? So, my but God. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go baby face, get my hair cut, do everything. Character brute. Okay. So I had throwback. <laughs> I've seen people do first salutes. This is gonna be the third time I do a first salute, in, in the ceremony. So I've seen people do it without uniform, and they were prior militaries. Like to me, yeah, like, that oh, one's that one's lazy. So I yeah, want to. I'll lazy. go in uniform and do it. But yeah, this is coming off. I was thinking about the mustache, but it's all coming off. Well, you tell him because you shaved your beard, it's going to cost you two silver dollars. Oh, that's right. That good, good call, man. Good call. Take this off. Yeah. That's two. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> all right, let me read this uh, last of it so I can make Eric through mad through the roof. The reports that Congress is asking for would evaluate whether beards affect the airtight seals or get of gas masks or oh. similar equipment, and whether Beards improve inclusivity for those with shaving waivers based on skin conditions or religious beliefs. 
Well, yes. No, I mean, the answer to that is yes, honestly. If everybody's got a five o'clock shadow or a beard, then nobody's going to be excluded right. because of a shape, an actual shaving wave. Right. right. Well, right. by the way, a point of contention here. World oh. War One, Adolf Hitler, his mustache became the mustache because he was gassed and his gas mask did not seal properly around his yeah. face. No so shit. So that's why he cut it down. He cut it because. Whoa. Of okay. Mister History with a good that. pull. I but like it. Guess what? You know who wore a fucking mask all the time and had the famous ass mustache in the Air Force? Robin Olds, rocking the fucking oh. mustache. He wasn't a bitch like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> he fucking had that massive mustache. He had his pilot's mask on, and he was still shooting the fuck out of people. Yeah, but we're talking about World War One gas mask. <laughs> what? But you know, it's almost like. Um, these days is putting a World War One gas mask on. Uh, you're right. It's almost kind of like, hey, fine, grow your beard, but if your mask doesn't seal, that's on you, dude. You're gonna die. You know. Just and die. that first gas attack, everybody like fuck the beard. I, you know, I was on intensive care, man. I, I could not Honestly, breathe. Everybody's got fucking throat beards. <laughs> Nothing but <the> turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> Clean shaven, looking Amish as shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, oh, you holy it. shit! Yes, that's up. good. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, we suffered through that thing. Hey. Yeah, we well, did, I, brother I, Jones. I, we I, did. I, <laughs> did. <laughs> you know, part of the part brother of the Hezekiah. <laughs> hey, part of this three-year program, then the people growing up with years, they have to go to the gas chamber. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I with so, it. Honestly, yeah, I'm with it. Right on. Um. Lastly, uh, these reports would examine the impact that beards have on discipline, morale, and unity, as well as identify any negative perceptions or biases toward members with beards. Right. So the amendment, it hasn't been passed yet, but the amendment was introduced by Representative Mark Vesey, or Vesey, a Democrat from Texas. All right. I find this to be the biggest waste of time that I've ever it's, seen. It's the it's involved. We talked about it last week when you were here, Eric. There was a oh, uh, a first sergeant, I think, who had a TikTok video um, about how he had been denied leadership opportunities because of his shaving waiver. He didn't refer to it as a beard. He referred to it as a shaving waiver. But he posted his picture, his official military picture, just, you know, glorious, you know. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm getting denied. It's like, well, you got fucking 200 years of military looking at you going, they're not going to turn on a dime, right? No. They're not going to get used to that. That's right. And I still no. don't see the reason to change. I'm not against change if it makes sense. Yeah, but sure. what does this right. mean? Don't tell me that this isn't for retention and recruitment purposes, like we talked about early on. I think, I think That's secretly, you know, it is. Absolutely. I think it absolutely it is. Not be. Yeah, it's absolutely. You have tattoos change too. You can have tattoos. Yeah. Make tattoos. Well, if you watched, uh, I, actually, I should have cut that part up from uh, uh, us last week, Jake. If you watched or watched us last week, um, because Jake correctly uh, corrected me. And I was like, hey, did we change that much from World War II to Vietnam? And he's like, yeah, the draft. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, good point. Drop off <laughs> yeah, we were taking dregs of the earth into the Army, man. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, that's a small change. Yeah, that was a good one. So I, I don't know. I, we'll see how it how goes. How many more stories we get about beards? But it's all over social media, and and people are are hyper aggressively defending beards. You know, and it was like just because you have a beard doesn't mean you're not a great leader. It was like, yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it's like, make you a great leader if you have one either. Yeah, it's like just because you got a DUI doesn't mean you have a, you're not a great leader. It's like, well, yeah, you are part of the time. You know, <laughs> so. Unbelievable. All right, let's get into Eric's wheelhouse here since we've talked a bunch of space stuff let for months, go. for months. So I'm yeah. finally kowtowing to uh, Mr. History here. Let's breach something. 
Uh, so this story is from Task and Purpose. Uh, this Air Force security team can breach an impenetrable skiff in one minute. It's impenetrable, though. It's in, well, not anymore. Uh, okay, let me read this and then I'll show you some videos. An Air Force security team has developed a kit. So there's a company called uh, Rapid Assault Tools, right? So these Air Force guys, I think through AFWorks, you know, the, through that uh, idea uh, thing, they partnered with them and specifically trying to get into skiff doors. So an Air Force security team has developed a kit of portable hydraulic breaching tools that they say can break into some of the most secure rooms on most military bases, a skiff or a sensitive compartmented information facility. The steel and concrete reinforced bunkers that store the military's deepest secrets. And you know, I've been in a lot of skiffs. I haven't steel seen a, I haven't seen the deepest secret. Right? <laughs> Especially when you're like, uh, hey, ninety five percent of this skiff stuff at Sibbers is out on the internet. Yeah. Well, when you start talking more of the sap stuff in the skiff and, and different room, and I hear you. I hear you. But it's not necessarily. I, I think Kennedy assassination is the country's deepest secret, right? <laughs> um, after five years of tinkering and practice, including building their own skiff doors to practice on, a team with the 6th Security Forces Squadron at McDill uh, in Florida says they can now break into or breach a skiff in less than a minute should a crisis arise inside one. Now, I've been in many skiffs, uh, and I don't know of any crisis that had to have somebody from the outside break into. So these guys might be manufacturing a reason to go, hey, we got to get in there. No. There, there might be. We need it. Let's build something to break the F down. <laughs> I mean, well, but, but here's the thing, though. Think about it. We've been around skips and stuff, and then, like, the, the, the protocols to get in there, right? And then... What you could have and not have inside the skiff. Um, you know, when I was telling my story about when I was an augmentee cop, right? <laughs> right, right. But here's the thing is, so somebody has well, some like one. And, and, well, remember that. Yeah. So he was just a coffee getter. That's yeah. all <laughs> so, but if somebody if somebody is going with malicious intent, they're, they're, I mean, they might lock everything out or maybe or maybe those doors actually close. Not even think not about even that Marty. Hey. Think about if I was a okay, fair enough, active fair enough. shooter, and I walked into Buckley. Yeah, I could literally walk past a badge in area, walk to the next doors. Right. If I could pull that pin, spin that combo. That's right. That door is yeah. locked from the outside. And oh yeah, good point. Now, yeah. I'm okay. All right. Here, I'm in that facility. And these guys either, can't get out. You're either oh. act, you're either actively like. Then there's no first responders coming. Yeah, that's wait a minute right? now. Wait a minute. Back back to <laughs> there is. You guys realize that on every skiff door that you've been in, there is a key bypass. Yes. If you, if you look at it, so that key becomes the the level of classification that's inside that's stored inside, and it's also stored at another location. So if that happens. They can grasp that key and not, open the door. Not now, immediately you... on site, though, right, Eric? No. Yes, on site. So well, I don't know anybody on site who had that. I knew we could call you guys for that. Well, that's what I'm talking about. A security yeah. person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come with the key. Now, but, the, but the crew's going to go fucking Lord of the Flies in there until they figure it out. And they're like, well, right. fuck, all right, well, how do we get out of here? There's a way to jam that, <laughs> break it off. Right. Well, what Jake was saying, though, from the inside. You spin the dud, whatever, and then you got that little knob thing that you that press. silver knob, yeah, locks it, and then locks it. Yeah, it does. It does. Once you once you depress that, so well, so Eric, I I was working an exercise, and it was being ran out of Oklahoma, but I was here at Schriever, right? Okay, babe. And I was at I had open and closed facility privileges, um, and in the evening the security would leave they weren't there all night when oh, they really were they contract security or yeah they're contractors when they left 
They knew I was in the facility, and I had a, there was a team of two of us. They knew I was in the facility. They forgot, and they activated the motion sensor. Oh no! <laughs> in the hall. So the first time I go and I go to the bathroom, the restroom. Yeah. I come back and go back into my skiff. Like there's nothing going on. Next thing you know, I got a phone call. And these guys are. <laughs> no, the cops couldn't get in. They oh. Couldn't they don't have to get out. in. Check this out now. In most places, to include in the contractor world, not just on base, it's a response time they have to meet. They don't have yep. to get in. Oh. As long as they're positioned they, outside the door and you don't walk out with classified. Yeah. We did our job. That's, that's what it was, but they were there to they were there to talk to me. Yeah, hostily. Yeah. Most times, <laughs> listen now. Most of the times <laughs> on the military installations where we had control over, yeah, we came and we took you out in handcuffs and. Oh, but they couldn't the get in. That's okay. the thing. All right, they well, had to wait. ask me to leave <laughs> in order to put the handcuffs on me. I'll be like, <laughs> no, go away. Well, Sir, they wouldn't have the bypass key. The rest of you? <laughs> automatically. <laughs> Say so holding those up to the camera to like look what we got for you when you come out. Right. <laughs> right. I, I do understand <clears throat> the need for breaching the door. Sure, there, sure. There yeah. are some threats that can can start. Yeah. Uh, it was fun because they they give you that one specific number that you have to add up to. You know, like oh, I hated that. Yeah, I hated that. Yeah. But they gave me that number, like. Nine months ago, <laughs> right? And I, and then the cops are like twelve, and I was like, "Fuck off, dude!" I honestly don't remember this. That's <laughs> He's your like, authentication number. Okay, all yeah. authentication. The authentication go, number. Yeah. The answer is still the same, man. <laughs> and I still don't know what the fuck you want me. I'll come out. He's like, "Come out! I want your ID in your left hand. I want your right hand." Oh, okay, dude. Fine. <laughs> now, see, in the contractor world, and Marty knows this, the skiff's up, you're not going to encounter that. Oh, Most yeah, places will not have a police present coming because it costs for a cop response from downtown. So normally, yeah. the security guy psh, gets called to go investigate <laughs> what's happening yeah. at the skiff. Yeah, but you're you know? getting overtime for that. So you're, yeah. you're, getting, a, you're getting additional calls. Right? Or additional day, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I uh, calls frequently, man. Gordon Steltzer, C oh. owner and CEO of Rapid Assault Tools, who worked with the uh, six SFS officials to develop uh, these uh, skiff breaching tools. He said, quote, up to this point, they had no fast, reliable way of getting into a skiff if there is an emergency on the inside. Without these tools, they were requiring about 45 minutes to get into a skiff. We're in within a minute. So let me read this real quick. Skiff doors, walls, and locks that secure them resemble bank vaults or armories and fall under a thick set of rules and specifications. Requirements for deadbolt and combination locks approved for skiff use in, or approved for skiff use include passing a strength test of 600 pounds of force directly on the bolt followed by a second 200 pound test without any damage, plus a direct strike test of 600 pounds against the door it secures. A lock must also operate in temperatures as low as minus 10 and as high as 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, it must absorb five electric shocks of 250 kilo kV and still operate correctly. That sounds like a lot of wattage. So, um, so that's what the requirements for the skiff is. They also cost like twenty five thousand. So the company built its own doors as uh, like test beds. So the tool is powered by a backpack with a battery motor and pump bar. The hydraulic oil provides power to the tools, while the battery provides power to an electric motor for energy. Oh, that's cool. Stelzer, uh, Stelzer said the system he said can attack a skiff door two ways. Plan A is called a door pusher in which a tool pulls the door open using high force hydraulics to break the lock. Plan B for the tool uh, was the easier way to attack a door is a hinge puller that pulls the hinges out so the opposite side of the door can be open. 
So I've got a couple of videos here. They're short videos. Um, I have a question. Why would you need to go through the door when you could go through a window that only has a... Skiffs thing? have no windows, man. Come on. Windows. Come Skiffs are not supposed to have windows. Well, they can building. have windows as long as they're on the second floor, tinted, yep. right, so fair enough. can't see across. So it's not reinforced with, like, unbreakable glass. Now, most of the skiffs I know are, you know, they're no windows, no cell phones, oh, no nothing. Back to the old still metal box. I'm going back to Buckley. That's how Buckley Wait, is. That's the thing, Eric. Yeah. He's, he's talking about military base installation skiffs. We're talking about corporate building skips. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's that's I know, good. Point. I know both have the ability to have windows in them. Yeah, but there's, I I have not been in a military one that's that's had windows. ICD seven hundred five now allows oh, windows. He's right. good. This guy's in good. This, that's an intelligent community directive. You should have explained that to these pigs, and they could have just freaking had a glass breaker. <laughs> Problem solved. But the windows are tinted, and they have a film which allows, prevents, you know. Yeah, shattering and all that stuff, yeah. Not just shattering, but uh, anything coming off. Oh, your the, the, I got you, the visibility yeah. thing. Yeah. So, this is Rapid Assault Tools uh, from their website. It's not the actual skiff door thing, but it does show the uh, mechanism that they're using. So this is the first one. Uh, at the heart of this system is a 10,000 PSI electro hydro. God damn, 10,000. Basically, <laughs> we have the fastest retraction on the market, which is really important for multiple breach scenarios. If you think about like a vestibule door in a commercial <laughs> facility, and then you've got the apartment door or whatever behind it, uh, you can breach multiple sets of doors very quickly. So. Everything's very linear, very controllable. It's almost like the jaws of life with the fire department. So, uh, very much so. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and this is the kind of, uh, this is with their rock and roll music. So, oh. so that's, oh, how, yeah. that's how it works, right? Woo, break that shit down. Wow. Fuck. That's yeah. It. That's very cool. So it's not going behind the frame, it's behind the It's door. just in the jam, yeah. Yeah, yeah the door. Yeah, man. And this one, I think, is the, the frame spreader. I know. <laughs> so that was just pushing apart the frame. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the door's got no purchase, right? That's pretty cool. So, uh, well, uh, tell us, Eric. You were on a bre you went to a breaching course, right? You were on a breaching yeah. team, right? We were back then, and I don't know if the Air Force still does it. It was called emergency service teams, where they responded to their own emergency situations on the installation. Because posse comitatus wasn't going to get there in time. Oh, that's my favorite you know? Latin phrase. <laughs> So we, you know, went through uh, most of their training, SWAT training with different PDs yeah. and also how to breach. And all we did was, you know, I can't remember the name of it, but it, we had one of the uh, fire department's crowbars with the fork on the end and uh, the sledge as well. And then we had a two handle uh, ram, cylindrical ram. It was about this weighed about 100 pounds yeah. that we had to throw around. We had nothing electronic to breach, which oh, was really? really cool. That's, now, there were courses where you would do, like, special forces that use Syntex and wires and oh, yeah, yeah, explosives yeah. to blow the jams off the door. Yeah. We didn't do anything. Uh, it's amazing that, that that thing's all contained in a backpack. That's cool. You know, the power, the the oil, uh, the pneumatics. It's is, pretty amazing. And they went with the Air Force Suggestion Program, too, right? Yeah, they went. they did this. Because uh, they had, they do a lot of stuff with fire and police, obviously. So most of that video that I cut out was a lot of fire and police breaching. So these guys at McDill were like, hey, let's hook up with these guys through AFWorks, that suggestion program, with funding behind it and said, let's develop something that can, that will take 600 pounds of force to open this door, you know. 
uh, you know, so we can get Jake out of there. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's waving from the window. <laughs> he can't authenticate shit. <laughs> he's in duress. We need to get him out of there. <laughs> he's setting microwave popcorn on fire. <laughs> Left or right. Eight minutes. All right, I got a, I've got a surprise for Eric that I didn't Ooh, send out to more. you guys. So a month ago, uh, the National Guard, the one thirty fifth, one thirty fourth Air Reserve Wing. Sorry, National Guard Air Reserve Wing. Uh, refuel. I'm sorry. One thirty fourth Air Refueling Wing Security Forces Defenders. They partnered with the Blunt County Sheriff's Office to conduct tactical weapons training on the BCSO's firing range uh, back at the oh, beginning of May. Oh, yeah. So I thought I'd uh, pump up our guardian a little bit. Nice. Pump up your defender, oh. your guardian. Our Was it a few pew seeds? The Blount County Sheriff's Office and went over uh, weapons tactics and training. So they worked on uh, transition fires. How are the all these security forces the guys so big? Smooth, hey, smooth, Eric, uh, just is that mustache and rigs? <laughs> you know you saw that. You I know did. you saw it. <laughs> They're reservists. No, baby. 134 security forces squadron. My focus on the training is I wanted there to be a lot of. Uh, Moving and shooting, you know, whenever you're in a now look how casual field, this guy is. So it's good to you're only, you're only as good as fast as you can move. Look at him, just the way that you, you yep. operate whenever you're moving and shooting. So, nice. it's a good takeaway to just start building Ooh. that familiarization process. I'd like for them to have a strong buy in to why we train the way we do. Look at that stash, uh, that is good. Man. He's good. We are the best security force. Look at this, there. and it's because of these training days and our partnerships yeah, is what allows. Do you ever do that training? Yeah. You know who I did my training with? SORT, Special Operations Response Training. You know who put that on? Department of Corrections. Whoa, really? Yeah. So we did a two-week course with them at the Air Force Academy. Yeah. Where you slept out there and they beat your ass for two weeks. And then oh. how to breach rooms, <laughs> how to, to enter rooms, slice a room with your weapon, not showing your fatal T. It was it was it was basically SWAT stuff, but then they got down wow. to the minuscule of how to extract a prisoner out of a cell, a jail cell. Oh no shit! Go in and force, yeah. Huh? Well, it was it was way cool. That was the hardest thing. With baby oil. oil. Same with baby oil. Well, between between football and these schools, I don't know when you were ever doing your actual duty, yeah. but it, 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 it was a hell of a career though. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, man. I did some cool shit. I did. That's that's awesome. I'd love to hear more about it, man. Yeah, yeah, man, that's I, really I cool. My... Can you watch a Can you watch a movie now where they're like clearing something? They're like, "That's not even close." You know what I mean? I, my wife tells me I do it all the time. <laughs> you don't know what they're doing. I'm like, "Well, yes, I do know what they're doing." Done it that way. <laughs> you know, there's there's more than one way to skin a cat. So everybody's stuck unless it's totally wrong. Yeah, yeah. Then I would go. That's that's bullshit. All so, right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. But for the most part, I can go. Yeah, that's good. That's good strength. Well, Eric, uh, wake uh, our little mule up. I think he went back to sleep over there, so he hadn't said anything in about fifteen minutes. So, uh, but wake him up with some uh, day in history, would you? Oh yeah, man, I got a good one for you, man. That's the opposite. Yeah, this is good stuff. No, hey, it's not the old days of Mr. History when oh. it was just like when he would do all that preamble and it was like, oh, God. Uh, this, is, this is down and dirty. So, 1917, Three April, years. right? America enters World War One. French and, and British are dying on the limb. They're getting their asses handed to them and they need us to enter the war, right? Go so boys. Show up in 1917. That's right. We don't get involved with the conflict until May of 18, 2018, or 1918. Really? A whole year. So here, here's, your, here's your history. This is amazing to me. So on May 28th, 1918, the 28th Infantry Regiment of the U.S. 1st Division, the Big Red One, attacked, oh, yeah. a, German, attacked a German-held French village called Katni, Katniki, C-A-N-T-I-G-N-Y, just so you know. Oh, you're putting that on us. Now yeah, we got to figure I, it out. 
pronounce it. So Cat <laughs> from 70 miles north of Paris. This operation marked an important moment in the history of the U.S. Army. A small battle by World War I standards, the Battle of Cagney was America's first significant battle and first offensive of World War I. Huh. It helped wrestle the initiative from the German Ludendorff Offensive and bolstered the morale of um, bolstered the morale of American European allies at a critical moment. On its outcome, in part, rode the amigation al question of whether arriving American doughboys would join a, an independent American field army or serve as replacements in the French and British armies. It provided lessons and experiences that shaped the Americans' approach to battle for the rest of the war and afterwards. It provided a young George C. Marshall, first oh. division operations officer, his first and only combat experience at the tactical level. Cackney marked the emergence of the modern permanently established combined arms division in the U.S. Army, an organization that remains central to that army for the rest of the 20th century and into the 21st. Furthermore, it was America's first commitment in blood to the democracy of Western Europe. So nice. a year. So if you remember, Blackjack Persian gets into Europe in 1917, and the French are saying, you got to go. We need your guys. We need your people. It's like, right. hold on, hold on. He said, I've got an untrained army. <laughs> That's right. You know what yeah. I mean? They were completely, yeah. they were walking around with sticks on their shoulders for the longest time. Yeah. So when they get in country for that Much year, like Vandenberg's training. <laughs> when they get in country for a year, they're being trained by the French and the British in country. So yeah, yeah, yeah. May, of, May 28th. I had no idea. First, first battle and offensive. Very good, Eric. Hey, you're always pulling these in. They're interesting. I, I, I hate to admit it, but they're interesting. I like it. I like it. I hate to admit it. <laughs> I hate to admit that I enjoy you doing your job. <laughs> you said you were going to do history. I've tried. Well, you did. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, getting, you're much improved. Marty's, Marty's just much itching improved. to take that shit over, man. That's all. Yeah, it was the same time. No, 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 no. I'm not. I want you guys to take more of the reins. But every time I hand you something, you're like, <laughs> because we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, one. I'm outstanding. <laughs> one, we're gonna need to discuss that mustache, my friend. <laughs> if you're gonna wear that, to I think you should go do the first salute as is, man. <laughs> yeah, and nobody. I, you just, I'm gonna do as a as an experiment, a social experiment, to see who calls me out. Well, Nobody's go. gonna call you out, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I called somebody out one time when I was at the 380th, and that ballooned into like three weeks worth of ridiculousness. Because Just because you called them out, you didn't just call them out. I made them do push-ups <laughs> at their That's own promotion that. ceremony. Oh, well, I then, like it. I like it. I, it I wasn't like him. It was the supervisor. That's why. So this guy went up, and he was. I, I think he got promoted to E4, right? And he was chewing gum as the colonel was up there Ooh. giving him his rank. So I found out who his supervisor was. I was like, hey, give me push-ups. And he's like, why? Because I, I said, because you let your guy go up there chewing gum in front of the colonel. <laughs> and then their squadron soup, like, or the flight chief or whatever went ape shit on it. And I was like, why are you, why are you making it? I was like, why are you letting this guy do or chew gum while he's getting I promoted. Called you up, Marty, and said, "Congratulations, young man." You no, we had to have this big touchy feely <laughs> thing, and it was ridiculous. Oh, it was ridiculous. So oh, wow. we had a whole day of snuggle <laughs> pants. <laughs> yeah, and, that's what, and, I, That's why I don't want to push uh, little mule too far. It was active. I, I, I want him in. I want him in. Reserves. Yeah, it sure was active duty buddy. and reserves. Right. It was. It was terrible. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe we should do uh, this show and like everybody takes a turn like one week to call end up and you can call it anytime you want, whenever you feel like it, right? <laughs> we could be in the middle of a story and be like, end up. And we're like, okay. And, and we just go from there. So I, I would like to give you that freedom, but I don't, I don't think anybody would take it. So yeah, tonight was one well, of our well, we would take it. You're like, you can't call end up now. I've got yeah. four more stories. But, more but I, I give you that. I'm like, ah. Uh, <laughs> Why do you have to throw the banner in? That's like a little 
nut tap. You didn't need to do that. I, I like the banners. They're good. Oh, shit, I'll be happy. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please like, share, subscribe, and let us know how we did in the comments. And make sure next week that you are not late for changeover. Man, thanks for the week. And I'll see you next week. Good to see you guys, guys. All right. Have fun.